PC's going. Backup is rolling. Okay, YouTube is on. Sergeant Owen, you may begin. Good afternoon and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. At this time, council staff, please turn on their video. Please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc.gov. That is testimony at council at, at council.nyc.gov. Thank you. We're ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant Katowski. Uh, let me gavel in the hearing. <laughs> Thank you for joining our virtual hearing today on New York City Department of Sanitation's 2020-2021 snow plan. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues that have joined us today. Uh, we've been joined thus far by Council Member Chin, Council Member Cohen, and Council Member Deutsch. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to our committee council to go over some procedural items. Thank you. I'm Nicola Bean, Council of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management of the New York City Council. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are called in to testify when you will be unmuted by the host. I will be calling on panelists to testify. Please listen for your name to be called. I will be periodically announcing who the next panelist will be. We will begin with testimony from the administration. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask a question, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you in order. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so again, good morning. I am council member Antonio Reynoso and I am the chair of the, <clears throat> of the committee on sanitation and solid waste management. Welcome to this oversight hearing about the Department of Sanitation's 2020-2021 draft snow plans. Local Law 28 of 2011 requires DSNY to submit to the council a snow plowing and removal plan for each borough and to make those plans available to the public on the city's website. This hearing will examine the draft snow plans that the council received from DSNY pursuant to Local Law 28 and the city's readiness for the 2018-2019 snow season. 2019-2020 uh, snow season? Um, I know how hard the whole department is working during snow season, so I want to thank you all in advance. Uh, this year's snow hearing is a bit different because we need to understand how DSNY plans to complete snow removal with a reduced workforce. I would like to try to understand how the budget will impact snow operations, where there will be enough DSNY employees to keep our streets and sidewalks clear. I'm also interested in how snow operations might clash with outdoor dining and the coordination, if any, DSNY has done with New York City restaurants to prepare for the upcoming snow season. I look forward to hearing from DSNY and other interested groups and individuals about the draft snow plans. Thank you. I will now call on members of the administration to testify. Acting Commissioner Ed Grayson, Director of Bureau of Cleaning Collection, South Sorello, sorry, and Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs, Gregory Anderson. I will now deliver the oath to the administration and I will call on each of you individually to record your answers. Please speak loudly and clearly when you answer. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Acting Commissioner Ed Grayson? I do. Director of the Borough of Cleaning and Collection, Sal Sorolo. I do. Sorry, can you repeat that? You didn't pop up. I do. Thank you. Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs, Gregory Anderson. I do. Thank you. Uh, you may begin when ready. I'm sorry, uh, Acting Commissioner Grace. I just want to acknowledge that we've also been joined by Council Member Cabrera. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Reynoso and members of the Committee on Solid Solid Waste Management and Sanitation. I'm Edward Grayson, the Acting Commissioner for the New York City Department of Sanitation. And I am joined today by Sal Cerullo, our Ranking Chief and the Director of the Bureau of Cleaning and Collection, and Gregory Anderson, our Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs. I thank you for this opportunity to discuss with you the Department's snow draft plans and our preparedness going into the upcoming 
2020-2021 snow season. In accordance to Local Law 28 of 2011, our draft snow plans outline the framework for the department's snow fighting policies and procedures from planning and preparedness to implementation. The plans identify how we will allocate personnel and equipment resources and to each borough and district. The coordination of services amongst agencies, the customer service protocols. We will consider all comments and recommendations received by elected officials on our draft plans, and then we will publish the final borough snow plans for the department on our website by November 15th. While the department's workforce and its vehicles and equipment are mostly visible to the public during winter, the department's preparation and planning process for each year's snow season is continuous throughout the year. After each winter snow season, the department undertakes a review and an assessment of its response to all storms during the previous season and makes any operational changes and adjustments where it deems necessary. As part of our annual assessment, department staff review all of our snow routes across the five boroughs and revise them as necessary based on the prior year's experiences and adjust for any changes such as construction of a new large facility, of changes in the traffic pattern, or a new street program. On street programs, open restaurants. So this year brings new challenges to our snow fighting operations. In September, Mayor de Blasio announced that the city's popular open restaurants program would be extended year round and made permanent. The program, which has enrolled more than 10,500 establishments since its inception in June, has allowed New Yorkers to enjoy their neighborhood restaurants safely by dining on the sidewalk or in protected roadway seating areas. This program has been crucial to the survival of the city's restaurants, most of which are small businesses and have faced an uphill battle for surviving during this difficult time. Since before the mayor's announcement in September, we have worked closely with the mayor's office and the Department of Transportation to plan for snow operations in the context of open restaurants, the roadway setups, we are confident that we will be able to safely clear snow and ice in this context. Since the beginning of October, the department has held its annual snow training for frontline sanitation workers and supervisors. In this hands-on training, our, super, our employees practice driving real snow routes on city streets with actual snow equipment. This year, it has pro provided a value op valuable opportunity for the, to survey the open street restaurant setups and make any necessary adjustments to our routes where some streets have narrowed slightly due to the outdoor restaurant furniture and fixtures. On some open restaurant streets, the department will utilize smaller holsters rather than the large plows. And we will also incorporate some of the brining pretreatment on certain roadways. We will work with the Department of Transportation and Small Business Services in the coming weeks to provide additional tips and guidance to restaurant operators as this program moves into the winter season. I ask that all restaurants use common sense when it comes to comfort and the safety of their patrons and employees. Ensure that all roadway barriers and structures meet the DOT specifications and guidelines, most particularly the eight foot maximum width for roadway dining. During a DSNY issued snow alert, businesses will be prohibited from seating diners in the roadway area, and they should remove or secure any tables and chairs and entirely remove any heaters. In a more significant snowfall, Remember that plows push snow to the right, and they can do so with significant force. Typically, our plows will push snow against parked cars or onto the curb, so restaurants, particularly on the right-hand side of the driving lane, should be prepared for a ridge of snow to form alongside their restaurant structures. In advance of significant snow forecast, the city may require restaurants to entirely remove their roadway barriers and structures or consolidate, consolidate them into a smaller footprint along the curb to facilitate safe travel or effective snow removal. The city will communicate early and often with business owners in advance of any winter weather forecast to ensure they're aware of their responsibilities. Preparing, preparing for a snow season. Safe and effective equipment is essential to snow fighting. The department performs and preventative maintenance on all snow related equipment and upgrades the equipment as necessary. The department also ensures it has adequate equipment, parts and supplies to carry out our snow plans including salt, calcium chloride, and brine, as well as snow chains and plow blades. Additionally, as a result of our prior investment into the updated Plow NYC and other GPS technology, the department's snow plow data continues to be made available in real time during snow events, with plow locations being updated several times per hour. Employing this frequent automation allows the department to identify challenges in neighborhoods where the conditions are detrimental so we can reallocate resources to those areas that need them the most. The department holds winter operations training for sanitation workers from September through December each year. 
Training includes spreader operations, attachment of plows and chains, use of two-way radios, and the use of our Magellan return and route navigation systems. We also conduct a full-scale mock snow drill once the night plow season begins to get everyone in snow mode. The important exercise involves all department divisions, including both operational and administrative functions. During night plow operations, the department increases staffing on night shifts to ensure sufficient coverage for snow or other winter weather. This year, the night plow season began last week, actually, on October 26th, and will end the first Monday in April. As you know, the department has historically used road salt in combination with calcium chloride to treat roadways during winter weather. During the 2018-2019 snow season, we began testing the use of salt brine in a liquid form as a pretreatment to inhibit the accumulation of snow and ice on roadways. Last year, the department expanded this program to all five boroughs for a pretreatment of certain roadways. The sodium brine solution will be used as an anti-icing measure to further help prevent dangerous road conditions in conjunction with our use of rock salt. This year, we have added additional large brine trucks to our fleet, increasing our, our fleet of brine spreaders to 30 total units. Throughout the duration of a storm, department field managers constantly monitor roadway conditions, equipment use, and variations in weather patterns. Our field officers report this information on an hourly basis back to their respective borough commands, which is then relayed to our operations headquarters. Salt spreading operations continue for the duration of snowfall. Once the accumulation becomes greater than two inches, the department deploys its snow plows. Plowing operations continue until all the city's traffic lanes are passable. Following the completion of all roadways, we begin clearing bike lanes, bus stops, crosswalks, and other pedestrian infrastructure. In recent years, the department has acquired additional snow equipment to more effectively remove snow from narrow streets, ramps, and elevated roadways. Thanks to these investments, the department now has a total of 705 large and small spreaders, 30 brine trucks, 17 large and 13, uh, thir 17 small and 13 large in that 30, 302 front end loaders, 569 SUVs for field officer supervision and 36 snow melters. This fleet not only makes us better prepared to respond more effectively to large snowstorms, but also improves our ability to respond to ice storms and other types of frozen precipitation where plows alone are not effective. The department's snow budget for fiscal year 2021 is $101.4 million. That is a decrease in $10 million from our budget in fiscal year 20. As you are aware, the snow budget is determined by a formula set forth in the charter and is a five year moving average of actual spending in the previous snow seasons. The department has adequate staffing with 6,300 sanitation workers available to manage this winter's snow and ice storms. Due to the hiring freeze and the city's budget crisis related to the COVID-19 pandemic, our staffing level is lower than it has been in previous years and about 400 lower than it was this time last year. I remain confident that the department will rise to the occasion and ensure our streets remain safe and passable during winter weather. We also have a, available approximately 315,000 tons of road salt stored at our 43 locations citywide with contracts in place to deliver an additional 600,000 tons as necessary. We also have 300,000 gallons of calcium chloride stored at 52 locations and 66,000 gallons of brine stored at seven locations. The department makes every effort to clear snow and ice from the city's highway streets and bicycle lanes and pedestrian infrastructure as expeditiously as possible. But this can be an extended process when persistent or heavy snowfall occurs combined with falling temperatures and high winds. Because every storm brings different challenges which impact the speed and accumulation and it impacts our speed in which we are able to clear the streets, we ask the public to be patient and allow the department workers who are performing under tough or often brutal conditions to safely complete their timely tasks and effectively. The department's 2020-21 draft snow plans detail our preparedness for this winter season. We are an agency that responds quickly and we're ready for any type of snow event. Snow fighting is a core component of the department's mission. And I assure you that our workforce understands that their performance is critical to keeping the city functioning 24-7. On an individual note, I personally have a great deal of firsthand experience in snow fighting. Uh, I started as a sanitation worker, operating plows and spreaders in the worst conditions and worked my way through up, uh, various positions such as, such as the assistant chief of snow operations and our ranking chief of field operations and our operations bureau. 
We have, we, as we approach the official start of the 2020-2021 season, I'm confident that the department's workforce can and will respond quickly and effectively to any major snow event. I look forward to your input and suggested comments on our draft snow plans. And I thank you, and I'm happy to answer your questions along with my team. Thank you, Commissioner Grayson. I uh, appreciate your testimony. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, only a few questions to allow for my colleagues to ask questions. Um, and so the first question is just, we know there have been cuts to the budget. Um, and I know you've, you've, you've talked about it in your opening statement to some degree, but let's be perfectly honest. Um, the snow doesn't care about budgets. Uh, it wants uh, to, to uh, it, it needs to be handled and with less workers, equipment. Um, I'm very concerned over our ability to handle uh, the next snowstorm in the city of New York. Uh, and I just want to hear very clearly from you because I think what we want to do is set expectations and the tone for the city of New York to understand or what the implications of these cuts are. So can you, to the best of your ability, um, let us know what, how confident you are in being able to handle uh, a significant so snowstorm. And remember, last year, even an insignificant snowstorm could, could cripple the city. So just wanted to ask, how do you feel? How confident are we um, with our ability to handle snow? That's a great question, Chair, and I thank you. And, and your support has always been critical for us, and I know you're a big champion of ours. Um, our headcount is lower. And as I stated in the opening remarks, uh, I'm not going to mince words on that. We're going in at about 400 less. Uh, to put that into context, though, in heavy snow events or even in, in, in snow events where we make a major deployment, we split our shifts into two shifts. So that would be somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, two to three active plow operators per district. Now, that doesn't mean that, that I mean, when you think about it, right, it's 400 people, cut that in half and then go into two shifts. So when you look at that across the 59 community boards, and I'm not making light of that, mm -hmm. I can tell you now, Chair, that I wish I had 400 more people. However, the headcount wasn't tied to the snow program. It was tied to the other programs that were cut. Okay. So I'm very confident in the men and women of this department, their dedication, the way we've been training to prepare for this situation. And while I would love to have 6,700 sanitation workers again, I have a plan for, for the 6,300 I have. Okay, so the, the snow operation, um, the numbers for the snow operation still make sense. Uh, the, the overall budget is cut. And of course, um, I still wanna make sure that I let the administration know that we need to really ha have a conversation about these essential services um, during, even during a, a financial crisis and really being able to be more thoughtful about where we're cutting. And the Department of Sanitation took one of the heaviest cuts in all of the city of New York's budget. Um, so again, this is mostly for my colleagues in the city of New York. Um, there are significant cuts, and because of it, there's going to be service uh, a decline in service, um, and there's no better uh, no better uh, group of people than the sanitation workers in New York City that that are as professional and as as high quality as they are. Um, but still, uh, a, a deficit is a deficit. Um, so uh, the snow laborer program. Do what do we have uh, to date? Uh, how how many folks? Are we ready to deploy? Um, and can I get it by borough if you have it? Uh, but what are we looking into? Or what are we thinking about for, with the snow laborer program? Uh, Chair, I will follow you up with you with a borough by borough breakdown. But for now, so what we did this year because of COVID is we actually, uh, in order to keep the, uh, the volunteers who are going to register safe as well as the workforce, we changed our registration. Normally, every year, the department solicits for registrations and and we basically do an open call. Please come to the district, sign up, and give your information. Naturally, in an era of trying to keep everybody safe, we have everybody who's coming to the districts do an online appointment. It's been very successful. We've had, in, in only a few, a few short weeks, we've had over 900 applications for an appointment. And to date, we've been, we have about a 30% return on that. So I feel some of those are future casted appointments because we're trying, we're, we're being very temporal and time sensitive. We're also being flexible with uh, the, the volunteers time when they can make it. We wanna make it as convenient as possible for every for all parties, make it mutually beneficial. But so far it's, it looks very optimistic. We have over 900 appointments for applications uh, you know, to sign up and we have over almost 300. We're running about 
uh, of success rate on the applications for now, which is good. Okay, that's that's good to hear. That's very good to hear. Now, I know you mentioned it in your opening statement, um, the Brian conversation. Um, you know, last year was supposed to be a pilot. Uh, just so want to, uh, just a, a quick uh, answer from you on whether you thought that's, that pilot was successful. From what I understood in different hearings, it was. And what does that mean? Uh, how much more are we going to be, how, how much more Brian would be, we be using in our city? Um, and, and then also, uh, a big concern in and around the outdoor dining um, and thinking about brine instead of salt, which I think is, is less invas invasive. Um, and these are expensive structures that a lot of these restaurants are, are putting out. So just want to know how much brine do we have and whether or not we should be thinking about using brine in heavy commercial districts that have this outdoor dining as to protect their property. Um, just wanted to just know if that's a conversation you're having, if it's something you're thinking about. Um, so, so please, uh, please come. Thank you. It's a great question. So one of the things to, to, we are definitely looking at brine as for all of its potentials last season, as everybody remembers was one of the lowest, uh, activity rates. That's why we, that's why, you know, when you think about, that's why the, there was a the significant drop in the snow budget because we didn't really have the biggest snow year. Thankfully I'm knocking on every piece of wood that we could have ever had last year. So the expansion of that program and the real time results, uh, we didn't, we didn't get as much, uh, you know, situational real time knowledge as we would have only because of the lack of the active pattern, which is a good thing. Uh, also conversely to that, we're certainly looking at where the outdoor dining is and the use of brine as a pretreatment. But that's the big thing to remember, just for, and especially for the members of the panel. Um, brine is in fact that it's a pretreatment okay. and it's not a bulletproof vest in snow. What it is, it's, it's basically giving you a saline solution, which is the exact complement of what the rock salt does only in liquid form first. This way it gets into the roadway ahead of time. And what that does is it suppresses roadway icing and it makes the plowing more effective. So that buildup of snow has a, a, you know, let's call it a thin candy shell for, for a real life example. It's, a, it's got a little bit of a, a delay. However, you have to deploy brine in the right circumstances. For example, New York City gets many rain to snow or snow to rain events. So in the, when the temperature isn't completely in that sweet spot where it's gonna be a little bit dry and we're looking at colder ground temps into a dry, lead in to the precipitation and when it's going to start as snow that's the best situation for us to deploy brine okay. if it's going to rain on the front end that rain would deplete the effectiveness of the brine because with all the added moisture it just dilutes the concentration that's giving the roadway here so we loved it, the use of brine and one of the things that are part of our messaging strategy and it's part of a global citywide messaging strategy working with the administration and dot and small business services and all the various stakeholders is to let these restaurants know what we are doing. This way they can have a plan for how they can also react during a snowstorm. Because we're gonna certainly be pushing snow towards them, which is one thing that we need them to have that cognizance. In fairness to them, you'll hear in other conversations about preparedness. Well, COVID has been in New York since March, right? But we didn't know that we were gonna go into a win Nobody wanted to go into a winter season with, with some of the new things, all the way that the, the great citizens of this town and all the administrators, and we've all had to pivot and grow. So this is still relatively new. And we look for the entire process to be very open, very uh, transparent to what our expectations are and our abilities are and work with all the stakeholders so that they can actually have a plan to how they'll pivot in snow because a snowstorm in New York City is hard under the best conditions. It's one of the toughest places in the world. That's why people come from other cities and other countries to find out how we do a snow removal program in such an amazing Gotham. Uh, adding structures in the roadway, adding other things is just another layer. And that's why we're, we're identifying, we're, we're very accepting of that challenge. We understand how important it is to have this uh, outdoor dining work uh, for a multitude of reasons to the best that it can, but we will not, uh, we are going to keep our eye on the ball of our role as the traction provider and the snow removal people for public safety. We will not fail in that. We're going to need everyone to kind of be cognizant of what's going on so we can work cohesively together. It's not just, you know, sanitation in it. It's your help. It's the messaging team's help. 
so that we can get people. And I think that our responsibility, Chair, and what you're getting at, and I totally accept that as our agency, is to be part of the team of, of, of all the agencies in the city that say, this is a reality. How do we understand that leading into before the first flake? This way we can ha hit the ground running. That's not to say that we will know all the answers. We've all certainly, when you think about what's happened over the last seven to eight months in the city, how many lessons we're learning in real time because we've never seen some of these things before. With snow removal, we have a very good process. We have a very good plan. We have a well thought out communication strategy. And we're looking to work with everybody who needs to be in that to basically get the word out of what we expect. Yeah, and, and look, I, I want to make sure that I talk to the Hospitality Alliance, the, the Latino Lounge and, and Bar and Restaurant Association, and just be able to help in getting some, some standard uh, some standard across the board, uh, because the last thing I want to do is then the snowstorm happens, the snow gets pushed over, and then I'm getting tons of calls from restaurants that snow is on my it destroyed the department sanitation destroyed my structure. Um, the snow went over the structure. It's like let's all work together and be. Um, I always ask for patience. Um, you know, it, we're all learning about outdoor dining right now, and there needs to be some level of understanding. And and um, and I'm hoping that the restaurant industry buys into that. And I, I, from hearing from your testimony and your statement now, it seems like you're very conscious of that. I really want to do right by these, by these business owners. So I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to hold out on any further questions so that I can allow for my colleagues to ask questions. I just want to acknowledge that we've been joined by council member Constantinides and also uh, council member Justin Brennan. Um, so I'm going to allow for the committee council to call on uh, the uh, elected officials as they showed up. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I will now call on council members in the order that they have used the Zoom raise hand function. So first we'll hear from council member Cohen, followed by council member Chin, followed by council member Cabrera. Council member Cohen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, chair. Uh, good to see all my colleagues. Uh, good to see you, commissioner. Um, uh, I do appreciate your testimony and I'm gonna say uh, uh, before I go off topic, I do have a lot of confidence in DSNY. Uh, you know, you have a good track record of, of snow removal in my district, and I'm appreciative of that. Uh, so I, I want to thank you for that and thank, you know, the men and women who do the work. Uh, by and large, I, I always say that uh, in my time in office, sat, we really get very few sanitation complaints. This, DSNY does their job, and they do it, you know, pretty seamlessly that we get very few uh, complaints. I'm going to just go off topic first, and then I'll circle back. Um, uh, I, I'm very concerned about the uh, the alternate side parking cuts. Um, you know, I, I have a district, you know, a diverse district, and parts of my district received no cuts because you know their ratings were high, and they had alternate side once once a week on each side. But in high concentrations in my district, you know, coincidentally, poorer sections of my district. Uh, they took a 50% alternate side parking cut and cleaning, and it looks filthy. Um, you know, and that, that's not a reflection of DSNY. You, you know, if you reduce cleaning by 50%, uh, you're gonna, it's gonna be 50% dirtier or 100% dirtier. It's, um, it's really a problem. I, I don't think it was done in a thoughtful way. Uh, it, it just again, cutting, cutting a, a service cut to, you know, in in the highest density portions of the district. Uh, it, it just makes no sense, and it's really having a, an impact uh, on the streets in my district. You know, Community Board Eight in the Bronx got no cut, and Community Board Seven got it got a fifty percent cut. It just it doesn't make any sense. So uh, I'm very concerned about that. There has to be a more thoughtful way, I think that uh, that that you know make sure that, that parts of the city that need cleaning get it. And again, you know, I voted for this budget, uh, you know, and, and it was you know, one of the most difficult votes I've taken at the city council, but. I also see it in, in, in overflowing trash cans. I, you know, it's been much harder to manage overflowing trash cans. And, you know, this is the first time really that we have been getting complaints about that with some consistency. So I'm concerned about that. And I just really wanted to go on the record with that. Uh, re regarding snow removal, um, can you talk a little bit about how time of day impacts, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I forget exactly when that incident was, but we, you know, we had that terrible incident that coincided with evening rush. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how the time of day or, 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 or the different circumstances go into your planning and how adaptable it is? 
Great question. And yes, uh, we're very cognizant of November 15th of 2018. Um, that was exactly the day that a an event that was not uh, completely on the forecasted radar for those amounts hit at the perfect time. And it was a really a, a, a perfect storm, so to speak, to come at a, the peak of rush hour, a couple of traffic uh, concerns that had happened that were, you know, uh, accident related, that had some shutdowns. And then here we found ourselves behind the eight ball. Um, and that's never been our plan. And it's not certainly not our plan going forward. And part of the aftermath of that was we had explored brine uh, prior to that. And then that was really going to be to be up there and make sure that those critical pretzels and those critical roadways that we saw where there was a log jam of traffic uh, and those on and off ramps of specific highways that are prone to icing that we could get there and give a treatment. Specifically the time of day that when we're monitoring the forecast, that is always one of the biggest planning caveats because it helps with our messaging plan and it certainly helps with setting expectations. And when we sit, we, we have three contracted weather vendors. We also get the direct feed from the National Weather Service through uh, New York City Emergency Management. And we have these big calls that are, you know, across all stakeholder agencies with regard to transportation and public safety. And of course, naturally the snow removal program. And time of day always plays into it. You know, naturally there are less impactful events where we'll get, we, are, we expect to have more access to be able to cover more ground sooner simply because the traffic wouldn't be there. Clearly rush hour storms are always something that we're on heavy alert about. Um, the interesting thing this year, Councilman, and I think you'll, um, you'll totally relate is we've all, we have a completely different, uh, while, it, while the traffic hasn't gone away by any stretch of the means, um, the thing that we're hoping for this year is that with the number of people that may potentially now have the ability to telecommute or do an alternative plan, thanks to what they've already had to adapt to, um, we're hoping that when the strategy goes out where we ask people to be mindful and to limit travel to only essential travel and, and following the global messaging plan, if they stay off the roads and let the plow plan and the removal plan work its magic, that we may have more takers on that this year only because of availability of alternate means to do their job. However, we do remain consistent and, and completely devoted to the essential workers and the people that do have to come to work every day and have no choice especially in a New York City that now has this new definition of what's essential. You know, everybody who was in throughout the pandemic at supermarkets and grocery stores and, you know, every day we, re, we all redefine what an essential worker is and we are committed to all of those folks. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cohen. I just wanted to just follow up on one of those questions. It's, um, do have you had a conversation with the mayor about being more uh, deliberate about, you know, maybe mandating through an executive order um, that vehicles can't move during a snowstorm and so forth? Just, uh, um, just, just wondering if those conversations are being had, given that uh, we are in crisis um, and, and, you know, we, we've been shutting down public transportation and so forth. Um, if it makes the job easier, considering the lack of resources that we have, we need we need we need every opportunity we we can get to get it right. I'm just wanted to know if those conversations are being had with the mayor. Uh, directly, me and the mayor, I have not had that had that conversation. In the conversations I've had with the deputy mayor's office and uh, OEM, we are talking about what the new messaging strategy will be and what some of the new triggers could be in a post-COVID. Naturally, we all have a lot of unknowns. You know, we have these great questions in there, and they are, they are great questions about, you know, uh, rises in COVID numbers or changes to, you know, travel orders or, you know, sheltering orders. And those are all very completely legitimate and valid points. But I, all I can commit to you to now is that we are talking about them. Uh, but to answer you, Chair, I have not directly spoken to the mayor about that, but I'm definitely sure it is in the wheelhouse of our general conversations, and we will be speaking as we continue into the season. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Councilmember Chin, followed by Councilmember Cabrera. Councilmember Chin. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, Commissioner, and to your staff. Um, and it's really good to hear that you are, you know, preparing well and you have sufficient equipment and, uh, and you're ready. 
<laughs> I just hope that we don't get too much snow. Um, but this year, uh, the new thing is the outdoor dining. And it's very popular uh, in my district in Lower Manhattan. And we have a lot of narrow street. I just envision all the snow piling up, which they always do anyway when, when the, the plows come through. So I guess my, my question is that, first is that, how soon are you gonna alert um, the businesses, you know, with the outreach to let them know, you know, multiple languages, how to prepare um, if there is a snowstorm, uh, if they have outdoor dining, uh, whether, you know, their structure is strong enough or they have to remove it, at least to let them know uh, what the criteria is and let them know uh, early enough. Uh, so when are you going to start doing that uh, in multiple languages? That's one thing. Secondly, also in my district, fortunately, we have a lot of local business improvement district. And I think that is very helpful um, to coordinate with them because they're the one that's out there early on if there's a snowstorm, they're the one that's cleaning the crosswalk even before, you know, they take care of it. So sanitation don't have to, don't have to deal with it. And they could be a great resource to work with the businesses um, to really prepare. And the third thing is that once the snow build up, are there ways to working with the bed or sanitations to sort of like remove the snow, put it somewhere else uh, so that there is possibility for some of these restaurants if they can continue to operate or just not let the snow just pile up there for days and days. Uh, if it could be safely removed uh, and put it and store it somewhere else. Um, where this way we don't see the snow piled up um, like in you know many of the streets, especially in the narrow streets. Thank you uh, for the questions. They're, they're all very good. As far as messaging, um, so there's gonna be a suite of messaging that goes out uh, because there are different triggers. Uh, for example, you know, in the executive order that governs outdoor dining, uh, a DSNY issued snow alert uh, ceases at the restaurant's ability to serve food out outside anymore. All right, so that's the cessation of their business structure. It doesn't require them to remove the structure, but you certainly can't uh, serve. Right now, the way it's, it's written is that you can't serve food and serve customers outside anymore once we're in a snow alert. So the, the, real, the real thing behind that is that not every, we would be in a snow alert if we expected, you know, the snow to be plowable. Uh, and then we would have a, a different trigger for something where we only expected to possibly use the brining on the front end or only pass with the salt spreader. And our hope is to have that in multiple languages messaged out uh, with 24 hours of advance notice, whenever that allows. Um, the, the challenge for everyone, I, I'm glad we're talking about this because this, this brings up a great topic of how hard it is to plan for some of this. That's why the more engagement that we can have now before the season really gets started, the better off we'll all be, including the business owners and the residents. Because the truth of the matter is, is that, for example, and I hate to reference it because it's that sore point, at least for my department, I was here for it. Um, the morning of November 15th, 2018, we were looking for a slushy coating to an inch. And then it became six inches of snow because the forecast in the midday changed, right? And more cold air stayed and the moisture lingered. And that was one of the things. And it's not, I don't want to, who wants to relive that moment? But the truth of the matter is, is that the weather is forecasting. So what we need to be able to do is have an open dialogue with, with the stakeholders, particularly the community organizations and the bids and these restaurants that are struggling to survive and say, we're gonna tell you as early as possible that we're expecting some level of snow. If it's plowable, we're gonna be driving plows through here and we're gonna be pushing snow towards your structure. And if it's not plowable, and, or if it is, we're also gonna be coming by with this salt product, either in liquid form or solid form that we're gonna be throwing on or about the center line roadway and near your structure, certainly. And then at the cessation of a snowfall event where you're gonna come out and naturally, if I'm a business owner, I'm gonna come out and do what I'm supposed to do anyway, which is clear the sidewalk. But naturally I'm gonna to try to get back into business and clear some of that snow. And more importantly, working with them on giving them best tips on how to put that snow somewhere that it doesn't adversely impact 
their structure or the pedestrians. So there's a multi-tiered thing in some of, especially down in your district where the streets are definitely tighter. That is now a, gonna be a competing spatial need where we also have to be cognizant of pedestrians that need to pass and we don't wanna block the catch basins because that'll make sure that now mm -hmm. we're not draining. So there is a lot, there is a, a, a very big cauldron of a pot of information that needs to be relayed. So we're gonna do our best councilman to, to, to try to get that word out through the messaging team. We're working with City Hall, we're working with DOT to make sure that those businesses, because they all have to register, that they're getting that information blast to say, hey, this is what's happening. And at the local level, I can assure you that our district officers are gonna be talking to the bids. We have a really great relationship with everybody to make sure that they were setting some expectations. That's where we wanna be with regard to snow removal. As far as putting it somewhere, It'll all depend, every, there's no, and I don't mean that cavalierly, not every event is something that's gonna stack a ton of snow. So normally when we have a severe snowstorm, you know, double digit depths, et cetera, we'll go into a snow removal complete where we plow it and then we come back, pick it up, put it in trucks and drive it to a melter location, et cetera. We have no intention of stopping that. Whether or not the new triggers are advanced because of what we're seeing with outdoor dining, that's still like a work in progress. And I mean that because I won't know where all the piles will be and how accessible they will be. Because if the business owners put a huge mound of snow somewhere where I can't get it without hurting, you know, like this, it's gonna be something that literally is built in real time. Um, but I can assure you, we do intend to have a snow removal program in significant events. We do intend to have messaging that hopefully could be about 24 hours in advance of what we're anticipated doing, whether it just be a, a spreading operation or whether it is a plowing operation that triggers another you know chain of events where they may have to stop dining you know seating folks or trying to batten down the hatches so to speak on those structures but we are definitely looking to work with the local communities and the bids because you said it best the bids are fantastic they come by they try to make it nice for everybody and they truly are a partner of ours out there and we, we value those relationships very much I mean, when I was talking about the messaging, I think it's good that you let them know that the 24 hours, but I, what I'm talking about is be, even before then, like now, you know, if your plan is ready, let people know that that's what's gonna happen. So they can start preparing now. So I don't wanna get a complaint that we, don't, we didn't know that they were gonna do this. I, that's why I think as early as possible to let the community board, the businesses know, this is the plan uh, for snow removal. You will get a 24 hour notice, um, you know, when, when the, the, the snow is forecast, but let them know now. So it's not like down the road and they hear about it 24 hours that they will, they thought that I, they didn't know that that was the plan. So I guess what I'm asking for is early notice that once you have your snow plan in place, whatever, that the messaging in, in different languages needs to go out as soon as possible, um, you know, to the electors, to community board, the bids, to the, you know, restaurant association, um, to the restaurant themselves. So everybody know what's coming. I think that will be the, the best way to prepare uh, and for them to know this is what it is and you better be prepared for it. Councilwoman, thank you. Um, and my, my media and messaging team will be a little uh, remiss because they're still tweaking language, but in essence, uh, we're, we have a campaign that we're gonna start almost in the very immediate future that is exactly that. It's basically you know, called, what's your plan? Because we have ours. So in essence, we're gonna be doing a lot of messaging both to public groups and community groups. We're gonna basically do a thing because the department, thanks to the local law and thanks to this hearing every year, um, we get to publish our plan and we kind of try to set an expectation. And then uh, these questions and this, this, this forum that that the council host is great because it gives everybody a chance to hear firsthand this exchange where we're all, all the stakeholders, we care. And we're, we're talking about how prepared everybody is. Um, this year, because of all the changes and because of the realities, and we wanna make sure particularly in the areas impacted with, with outdoor dining and just with other spatial concerns that we're saying upfront, what's your plan? So thank you. Uh, it's a great idea and we're, we're working towards that. You'll see it shortly. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your partnership. Thank you, Chair. Next we'll hear from Council Member Cabrera.
Thank you so much uh, to the chair. Mr. Chair, thank you. You're always so gracious to uh, allow your colleagues uh, to ask questions uh, and not wait a, a whole hour. So, uh, and you're very consistent with that. So thank you so much. It means a lot. Uh, Commissioner, uh, welcome. So glad uh, to have an opportunity to ask a couple of questions. And I want to echo uh, Councilmember Cohen's uh, sentiments regarding uh, the good job uh, that we find our uh, the Department of Sanitation doing in our district, uh, with the exception, of course, of that uh, horrible day in November in 2018. I, I, it seemed just like yesterday. Forgot it's, it was. It's been that long. Uh, he. I. I do wanna. I, I do wanna ask a uh, follow-up question that the chair was asking and directing that he was going. Can you give us a percentage of delay, anticipated delay, that we're gonna have as a result of having less plows, less workers uh, on the road? It's a good question. And I think, I think that, that the best, we will certainly have a service delay. And with regard to this, I wanna, I wanna frame that so that you can see it contextually. We will be, so our frontline snow operation, when it starts snowing are those salt spreaders and the brine trucks, they'll be out there. Our headcount reduction does not impact that. So our first wave of defense is right out on time. We haven't missed a beat. Our second wave is the plows. And we have a tiered plow response plan. So in the end, we're gonna have plows out in the same expeditious manner that we always would have. Where we now run out of bandwidth, so to speak, is towards the tail end of the storm when it comes into, we get back into traditionally, we would have reverted back to some level of collection operations and snow, you know, at the end, you'd see we'd start, we'd, so I think that our delay in all fairness, that is, I want to be upfront about and honest, because I'm not, look, we, I wish I had 400 more people, but I don't right. have function for them without snow. So with that in mind, the plan we have is good. Over the few, last few years, when we were hosting the additional headcount because of the organics program and the other programs that were that didn't make it past this year's budget for you know for for cause um we were able to be a little bit more nimble so when we were done salting and plowing uh we were done quicker because we had more plows on the front end don't get me wrong we, we added additional plows with those manpower but then we were able to revert back or conversely prior to the start of snowfall we could have stayed on some of the more routine collection and cleaning functions without pivoting into a total snow. Our plan for this year is to be aggressive with snow, but to the point where I may be on snow operations longer than your constituents have seen in the past. And therefore I may have collection delays. I can't, I may not be able to pivot back. So when I, when I think of a delay for this snow season on the front end, it will be on what happens immediately in the shift or two after snow and how fast we can pivot back to also getting some garbage, also getting some recycling. But can I also you, can, you, I, can you give me because uh, I don't want to be long, uh, but can you give me like a a percentage uh, related to delay? Do, do you do uh, analytical studies uh, and do you have models that show uh, how much slower it's going to be? Is, is, do you guys have like a software that gives you that type of estimate or or is it pretty much through experience? It's usually, and, and there are some models and some forecasting that we can do. The truth is that on a, on a traditional uh, salt spreading event, that may, where, it's, where we don't have to employ a full plow deployment and we're not doing residual passes because in a heavy plow storm, we may have to go down the same block four or five different times mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that we have a passable roadway. On a straight one and done, we've treated the roadway. We're going to get some warming depending on the time of day. We may it may cost us a shift, whereas we may have a one shift delay. Uh, really, it could be as little as an eight hour delay from where we would be typically under similar circumstances. And that would be categorically because we would we fight the snow in real time. We want to be prepared. We we do a citywide response, so we may have a one shift delay from where we normally would be on an insignificant event. On and a significant a event. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Uh, and how does that play into the potential attrition? I would imagine between now 
and the end of February, you're going to have uh, more people retiring. Uh, I would imagine there's a freeze also, uh, and therefore you're not going to be able to rehire. So are we looking from 400 going to 500? What are you anticipating? Uh, we, so we, we, are, we do have forecast attrition in there, and there okay. is a little bit of bandwidth to get us, because our budget and headcount, we have about 6,300. We're looking to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,200. So there, our plan is on a 6,200 headcount uh, around there. Okay. So we still have a little bit of play between there and we get there. We are aware of, of attrition. Uh, typically in winter for us, we see a slower trend. Uh, normally, and I'm just being an ex-uniform employee responder, um, if you're going to retire, you retire before winter, not, you know, not during. <laughs> just that's the way that you, if you're if you're thinking of going you don't want to see a single flake by the time you're done right but, but in fairness we have we have some play left uh and i don't mean to say cavalierly but there is a little bit of bandwidth left to where our planned headcount is supposed to be okay. uh we will get there throughout the winter but i can assure you we are talking with omb about that they are aware of the numbers we look at it constantly and we do have an open ear despite hiring freezes uh people are cognizant of how important we are and we, will, we are certainly having those discussions ongoing. And the last thing is more of a common uh, suggestion, actually. Uh, and that is when we're anticipating heavy snowstorm, can we have uh, some kind of plows or for that matter, uh, tow trucks, uh, the GW bridge? Last time, from what I remember the commissioner mentioned, that part of the problem is the city end up having a traffic heart attack, so to speak, because of the accidents that took place at the GW Bridge, which is non conceivable, especially in the upper deck, because it tends to freeze faster, right? Because it's suspended in air, uh, the bridge. So, uh, but it took hours uh, and hours to get, you know, that type of help to be able to get, you know, those who needed to get out of the city, which were causing a jam in the Deegan. I, I'm right next to the Deegan, Deegan. And let me tell you, it just, the Bronx was just immovable. Uh, and so it's just a suggestion. Uh, and, uh, and with that, I'll give it back to the chair. Wish you the best for this winter. The, the forecast is that we're gonna have more snow than ever. Uh, and so that's what I heard. And so, I guess those of us who have faith will, will be saying a prayer. <laughs> well, let's know. But uh, we could usually. Uh, Council member, you got to be careful. We don't want you speaking that into existence. You yes. Gotta, you got to cut that out. Cut yeah. his mic off. Cut it. Cut yeah. Cabrera's mic off. <laughs> but we need the water, right? We need the <laughs> All righty. So let, let, let me check out. Thank you uh, for, for the time, uh, Mr. Chair. Always thank, wonderful thank to you. be in this committee. Thank you, council member. Uh, I, I got a couple of, are there any other uh, council members that are, are, are in order to speak, committee council? Um, no one's used the Zoom raise hand function, but okay. if they want to, they should now. Yes. Um, so just uh, very quickly, electric vehicles, uh, you know, if you know anything about me, you know, it, we are in a climate crisis. We are in a time when we want to move away from fossil fuels and um, you know, our trucks are heavy, our trucks are, are you know, consume significant amounts of, 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 of gas. Um, uh, we were supposed to have some type of new testing being done in a garbage truck. I uh, just want to, it's a, it's a, it's everyone, everyone cares about where we are with the electric truck. So please let us know that we've, we're going to buy, you know, 2000 electric trucks. Like what's happening? Talk to me, commissioner. Uh, so right now we are, we are testing, uh, we are still testing the, and we're, we have, it's planned to go out on, on, and run its paces on some collection routes, uh, in, in Brooklyn, um, and, and in some other areas of the city, but we're going to start in Brooklyn. It needs to be close to its charging source. And North, right now, North Brooklyn? What was that? North Brooklyn? Yes. Uh, yes. Very, very close to where you are, sir. Uh, so <laughs> we, we should have a, you know, I would love to, to push out a campaign and, I have a lot of trash nerds in North Brooklyn that care deeply about this. Uh, you know, to, you know, if you had a, a hashtag so that people could uh, take a picture of it, if they see it, if there's some way to do a promote, make, make it exciting. Um, if, if you can, 
Uh, but I would love for it to be something that I can I can help with. I know I have a bunch of other trash nerds or trash <laughs> trash lovers that would love to to push this out. Um, but um, when, when can we see it on the street? What, what are you thinking? Um, we're, we're, it's supposed to be out on, on the, 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 the initial route testing by the end of this month. Uh, so I will, and I will definitely follow up with you uh, on the exact date that we deploy. Um, Cause there'll be a team of people, both the DSNY and the manufacturer who are following the truck. So we're going to make a spectacle out of it because we are also excited about what the potential can be. Uh, our main goal is to see how well, look, I think that eventually we're going to see uh, a, an expanded fleet in all, especially uh, in DSNY of much more electric use. Uh, you know, I, I definitely see that coming. I think it's great technology. Um, our main concern too, and we're also going to be looking for, especially now. So here we are, we're having our, our snow preparedness hearing. We're very excited about the use of the truck to see where it goes. We're also excited to see the battery life. Because as you know, you know, the reliance that we have on fuel is also because in certain situations, typically snow, our trucks now have to run extended hours. And we yeah. need to make sure that we have, you know, a battery solution that is cognizant to that, or at least understand how we can incorporate the use of electric vehicles into our overall snow plan, always having a fallback position so that we can stay mobile as needed for how, no matter what the duration of a snowfall event is. But it's an exciting time for the department. We have an electric broom that we've been piloting. We have an electric garbage truck. These are great things. And I will definitely keep you posted on where we are. I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm excited to see it. If you can show us the route, I'll promote the route on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere I can. I'm pretty sure you'll have <laughs> folks outside waiting for it to pass by. Now, uh, speaking of uh, electric vehicles, I want to talk about uh, a big issue in this city um, that we've been trying to deal with is the cleaning of bike lanes during after snowstorms and how, uh, it, you know, we get it that the emergency vehicles have to move through and we have to make sure we take care of our roads first. Um, but there has to be a better way to handle the, the bike situation. Um, these bike lanes stay uh, filled with snow uh, for weeks in, in some cases. Um, and I, I just, I just don't know, if we found a solution to it or whether or not it's a priority. I know right now, given the, the crisis that we have financially that, uh, you know, we can't be investing in new things, but I just really want to do as much as I can to let you know that we need to find a solution uh, for clearing snow in these bike lanes. Uh, Chair, I couldn't agree with you more. And I know that when you worked with my predecessor, there was, there was a dialogue and we have a dialogue with DOT and we have a dialogue with city hall and about, where we're going to be as, as, as uh, bike lanes expand. Mm -hmm. And we all are very cognizant now of this year particularly will be a year where we can further evaluate. We're going to clearly pivot to try to get to these bike lanes as fast as humanly possible for us with the smaller equipment. For every bike lane that fits us, we're going to go. Our looking forward where, where our concerns are, are the bike lanes that as they expand the program, they aren't, we can't, they can't be as wide as they would be to host even one of our smaller plows. What piece of equipment are we going to be able to get in there? We're very anxious to know what that is mm -hmm. and how fast we can implement. For this year, we have a plan for the bike lanes that, that, that are out there. And we recognize more than ever that the way people have traveled in the wake of COVID has changed. Mm -hmm. And a lot more people are relying on bikes because they want to be out in the fresh air. And that this year, they may even be willing to brave the cold and brave other elements because they value the fresh air that they can be in and that exposure versus getting into mass transit or whatever. We, we're cognizant of that and we appreciate your partnership. We appreciate your help and support. We are working with DOT and we're looking at those routes, looking at those, those lanes to see what the right piece is. And we're gonna be committed to come up with a plan to make sure that we can get there. For this year, we had the fleet that we have, as you said, uh, we didn't do an expansion of those smaller tractors or anything else, but we have a good number of holsters. We know where the bike lanes are. We're going to get in there with everything that fits, and we're going to do everything that we can to keep as many bike lanes free and clear of snow and ice as soon as we finish our plowing operation, like immediately right after uh, for the primary roads to make sure that we give that opportunity for people to get back out biking. And I just want you to be conscious, and I appreciate that. It shows that you, you guys are having the right conversations internally. It isn't a... Uh, you know, uh, a subject that is not being paid attention to. Um, you know, whoever wins this election, um, hopefully we'll find out by Friday. Um, you know, there could be a, a significant amount of money coming into the state and the city 
um, for a lot of the relief that, that we would need. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, so, I'm hoping that DSNY gets a significant amount of that and that we can, one, get the 411 workers or the any workers that were cut back into the Department of Sanitation so we could be um, at full capacity. Uh, but when it comes to the equipment that we buy, uh, that we think about um, the new alternative to traveling um, is we want to limit uh, single-use vehicles in the city. Um, it's not, it doesn't help. Uh, we're, we are doing more cycling, so maybe we should be putting more of our money into buying uh, equipment that is specific for thinner uh, or smaller lanes. And it'll solve other problems, right? Now we can't build bike lanes in certain areas because it has to be a certain width. If we buy smaller vehicles, the opportunity to build more bike lanes will expand as well. So they, it solves many problems if we could just get equipment that makes sense for for what we're trying to do. So when that money comes in, uh, we'll be having a hearing. So don't worry about it. We'll have a hearing and I'll be asking for this um, if we get the money. So, uh, but look, um, I, I have a lot of questions that I feel like I've asked for six years now. Um, so I'm, I feel like I'm very well acquainted with the operations um, and the snow plan. Uh, I wanna, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt here. Um, you know, I, I want you to do a good job. I have the utmost faith and confidence in the Department of Sanitation to do a good job. Um, and hopefully when and if we get snow, uh, we'll come back and, and recap and, and hopefully it's good news. Uh, but look, I have no, I, there's nothing that's happened over my time that makes me feel that, that that's not going to happen. So um, I, I really appreciate your time. Um, if there are no other members that are going to speak, uh, Commissioner, again, thank you for your time. Thank you to... Uh, to Soralu, um, Soralu, am I saying that right? Soralu, help me out. Can we unmute yes. him? There you go. <laughs> yes, you are, Chair. Soralu. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time here. Um, we really appreciate you all, and to all the staff members, um, appreciate you as well. Uh, but I think we're done here. Um, and I'm ready to bang my fake gavel. <laughs> Thank you for the time. We really appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you all. Good job, staff and sergeants.